metal wings to fly won't take you to the stars. Use the metal for a boat and you won't sail too far. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal pots about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. The secret pink code, pink code, Signs can be tricky, it can overheat your brain. Signs can be hard to chew, each bite can be a pain. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal pots about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. The secret pink code. Goodness, what an awful story. Tell me again why you need this. It seems like overkill. Barry? Now just who are you protecting your fridge against? I'm confused. It's against the worst threat there is, Pen. In space! Our food is the most important resource, and it's mine. See? This code will make sure all the food stays mine. All nice and safe, yeah? That should do it. My brain is the only place the code is now. All right, now I got a book to get back to. <sighs> Careful now. Missing the mark here would be a disaster of galactic proportions. <laughs> Get it? Right. Well, anyway, make sure to keep the ship steady. That's right. Say, have I told you about the time I discovered life on Enceladus? Wally had gotten himself in trouble again, and things were really getting hey out guys! of hand. It was around Food this time. time that we... Science can wait! Hello? Our faithful chef? Barry, you there? Oh, I'm about to eat this bone. Are you listening? Oh, just wait till I get down there. Give us food! Give us food! Right now! I think our dilemma is more complicated. Back on Earth, it's winter, and that's when bears hibernate. <sighs> I'm honestly impressed. In space, the body still follows patterns. Carrots! We have to cook ourselves? Unfortunately, we can't even do that. That's right. Look, he locked it. We're doomed. We just have this. Piece of carrot cake. It's just a simple lock. Just leave it to me. Free yourself, Bridge! Ow! Ah! Unfortunately for us, I've outdone myself. We need a code to open this lock, and only Barry knows what that is. I'm starving. Well, chaps, it's unlikely we'll make it to Mars without food. Wow, good thing you still have your optimism. I could eat an optimism. I know how to open it. What? what? Trial and? Error. Trial and error is one of the earliest methods of problem solving known to man. 
The idea is that to find a desired result, you keep trying new things. Every time something doesn't work, you eliminate that idea. Eventually, you'll come upon the solution. This method works best when there are only a few choices you can make, and it doesn't always end up pretty. And you shouldn't use trial and error when one of the choices can be super dangerous. Okay, here goes attempt 576. Attempt 577. If my math isn't off, and my math has never been off before, then with this method it should take Crash 300 years to break the code, or so. Well, it's not like we'll need any dinner breaks. If only there was a way we could get inside Barry's head. That's a way we could figure out the code. It's true. Just a peek in that Barry brain of his. You know, that's not as crazy as it sounds. It's just a scientific theory right now. But with some advancements, it may just become reality. One of you grab his arms. I have an idea. Reading thoughts is something scientists have dreamed of for eons. And lucky for us, I think I just might be the one to crack it. Thousands of years ago, man figured out that a person does something funny when they tell a lie. Their heartbeat gets faster and they start to sweat. Later, they invented a machine that could tell, based on these facts, whether or not a person was lying. This machine was called a polygraph. The polygraph measured their heart rate and could tell whether they were lying or telling the truth. But it couldn't read thoughts. Being able to do that would be a lot more complicated. See, our brain works by firing billions of tiny nerve impulses around the body. Every second, Billions of these tiny charges appear and send messages. That's how we're able to think and move. These charges are responsible for us playing, dancing, and uh, doing whatever Crash is doing. Oh, and there's another type of machine scientists have created. It's called an electroencephalogram. These bad boys attach to the outside of your head with electrodes that detect brain waves. Scientists can read these brain waves and collect data. We still can't read thoughts, but we can tell if someone is having a dream. All right, my sleepy friend. Let's try this. Ah, uh, Barry, look here. Can you hear me? We need your help with something. Absolutely fascinating. With this, we'll be able to ask him the code. Not outright, of course, but with the help of brainwaves. Ah, uh, hey, Barry, let me know when I hit the first number. One, two... Three. Now go to the bridge. Tell us you will. No, you won't win. Fear we do not. A machine that can read your thoughts we shall use. Yes, find your code I will. What is the first number? Is it one, two, three? <laughs> his heartbeat is too fast. His blood pressure is up. I can't read anything on his chart now. Looks like he's having a nightmare. I wonder why. I hate to say it, but neither the polygraph nor electroencephalograph will work for our purposes. They're too rudimentary for actual communication. At the very least, he can hear us. Now, if only we could run with that idea and communicate back somehow. I have a question. Where do ideas come from, anyway? Oh, don't remind me of my failure. They clearly don't come from my brain, amazing as it is. <laughs> no, not that. I mean, what part of the brain are they? We won't be able to read minds anyway. It all depends on what part of the brain is active at that time. I think you might be on to something. Different parts of the brain are responsible for a variety of things. So that means if we isolate part of it, he can give us a signal, his imagination. Our brains have many different sections and each do a different type of job. The different parts help us hear or see or think or move. We even have a part of our brain that tells us when we've heard a funny joke. When a certain part is activated, blood flow increases to that area. That's how we're able to tell all the different parts. We can look at the different parts of the brain with an MRI machine. Scientists just watch where the blood goes, 
and we can tell which parts make us scared or happy or anything, really. Chico, if you please. Go ahead. Hey, Barry, how's it going? Can, Can you, you tell, tell us, us the code? code? Barry, please tell us the code. We need it bad. Last much longer. We won't. No way. Please help. We'll say some numbers, and when we come to the right one, just think of some honey. He should think of honey? If Barry thinks of something he likes a lot, the part of his brain that thinks of happy foods is the one that will get activated. We can just monitor that part and we'll know we've hit a right number. We are our friends, Barry. Please help us out. Please, please. Well, you've worn me down. Fine, fine. Uh, let's do this. The first number is zero, one, two, Yes, the first number is two. Nice. <laughs> so what's the second number? Zero or one, two, three? <laughs> My word. I knew it! Those aliens! I knew this would happen! You guys! All the food! It was aliens! that broke into my refrigerator! Oh! So aliens, huh? It was just... you? But our reserves are gone now! What food is still left? Relax, old bear! It's your fault we almost starved here! Did you forget about us? Attention. Approaching Mars landing site. Super cool! What'll we eat once we land on Mars? Uh, maybe we'll come upon some friendly Martians. We'll share. <laughs> <laughs>